Kan jag tyst? Kan jag tyst? Åh, oh, jag kunde sorry. Kan jag tyst? At this time, I would like to, with the words and the songs that we bring to you this evening, I'd like to apologize for any mistakes that we may have. May our actions, may our actions touch you softly, like the down, the feathers from the eagle. Konatish, Konatish, I'd like to acknowledge Esther Shea of the Tantan Kwan, Kekwedi people, for the story we're about to tell. Elmer Makua, for the story we're about to tell. I'd also like to acknowledge Jackie Schopert for the poem we're going to recite from her brother. Konatish, Konatish, and Willie Jackson, who has joined us from the Tantum Kwan Take Hui Di people. Again, I'd just like to say, Konatish, Konatish. They say, A hot us, A ish us, O Kariyan, O Yakusari, A Tisko us, Konatish, Konatish. Except to we, Pasin Shah, Eagle Quad, Cook. When he was a very small boy and had never seen the land of his grandfathers, even when he lived 2,000 miles away, his clinked grandmother would visit him. She would always ask him this question Who are you? Who are you? And as soon as he could talk, he would answer, I am Kuchish, Tan Tequan, Te Hui Di, Kuts Hit. I am Kuchish of the Tungus tribe of the Brown Bear clan, of the Brown Bear house. I am Kuchish. Small boys grow up, and this one grew up tough, living on the streets down in California. His father, the Hawaiian, was a sailor man. He was usually gone far out to sea, some distant foreign land, gone and his mother drank so often that she was gone even if she was there. So the question of his grandmother was just an echo growing fainter and fainter until he no longer heard it, but somehow he never quite forgot. The street made him a warrior, a warrior in the wars for drugs and for territory, and maybe in a way for honor too, but only they, the warriors, understood that part. He rode a black motorcycle, big and fast, Maybe it was the kind they called Indian. He favored a nine millimeter and a semi-automatic and a switchblade knife. And he had loco tattooed on his arm. The wars were real, life and death. He killed men, I don't know how many or who they were, but the blood was on his head and he never forgot it. The street made him a warrior, this young man. And he went to prison, eventually. One night he was riding that black motorcycle down some California highway like some dark bird of death. Maybe it's that winding highway that runs along the seacoast where the big surf runs in. All the way from Alaska, all the way from Hawaii, he was moving drugs, maybe cocaine. And he had that nine millimeter tucked in his belt because he believed that maybe he would have to use it again that night. Well, he had eaten some of the drugs and he had gotten too high and he was going too fast. And he could see the road was curving like a snake and the black sea was crashing on the rocks below and it was too attractive to him. Even in his state, he knew that. So just before it was too late, he stopped. He got off, and maybe he was just standing there, watching the reflection of the moon on the water, trying to focus his eyes. That's when Raven came to him, perched right on the handlebars of that motorcycle, and Raven began to speak to him, and he said, here amidst the eddies of southeast, where ravens call and eagles tell in salmon from the channels, I hold a legacy of song and feel within my heart the rightful place. Sweet child, the stars are yours to drape across your mind in profound wonder in the manner that the cedar laces gracefully this land of ancient beauty. Oh, sweet clinket child, why do you drink when all around you tumble cedar? 
He grew up in California. He didn't understand about the words of the raven. He couldn't understand what was being said, but he knew that raven was speaking to him, standing there watching him. He knew maybe he was thinking that raven was talking. Maybe he was asking him the question his grandmother used to ask him. Who are you? Who are you? Or maybe that raven was trying to tell him that very night, that very hour, his older brother had been killed in a gang war across town. They were both soldiers in. He couldn't understand the words of the raven, so he just sat there and listened, only knowing as he sobered up that he was missing something. Well, the police eventually captured him and they sent him to prison for a long, long time. The war went on in there too, even worse than in the streets because in there they would kill you for a pack of cigarettes. So after a while, he no longer cared if he lived or died. Three times they tried to kill him. Three times he nearly broke through that thin veil into death. They shot him, they smashed his skull in and they pushed him up against the wall and they slit his throat from ear to ear. And they were sure that that time then that they had done it, that they had killed him and they left him for dead, but he was alive. All they did was take away his voice and much of his blood. He was in a coma then for weeks, maybe four weeks, a moon. Dreams, he began to have dreams the kind we recognize as spirit dreams. Once he saw trees, more trees than he had ever seen in all of California or Hawaii. They were the rainforest trees of Southeast Alaska, his grandfather's land. And then in that dream, those trees seemed to turn into clean get people wearing button robes. They were his own people. He recognized them at last. So that young man there, beaten, didn't know where to go but he knew that he was part of something bigger, much more important than any gang. And that's when they let him out of prison and he never went back. That's when he started his real life, into his, his real journey, into his real life. And he never went back to prison like he had done so many times before. That young man there, he sat and he knew he wanted to go home to that place that he had seen in those dreams, to that place, to Alaska. But he had a lot to do before he got there. So he went. He had a teacher in prison who showed him the way, given him some direction. So he followed those directions, and he wandered until he found his first teacher. He wandered for seven years through California, all over the United States, Canada, and all the way down into Mexico. Each place led him to the next, each teacher to the next. They were healers, medicine men, medicine women, shamans. They were the ones who remembered the old ways, the respect for the land and the animals and all the things that have been so important to us but have so often been forgotten. They taught him about real honor and not the kind that gangs kill for. He had 10 teachers during those 10, ten years, each one from a different tribe. Each one spoke a different language, but none of them, none of them were the Klingit elders he wanted so much, this young man. Another dream, this time he was out on an island, on a spirit quest. Four days of fasting, solitude, and prayer. He was lying under a tree when a little mouse came up and began to speak to him. It seemed this little mouse knew his name, and he began to ask him questions. Who are you? Who are you? And he looked at that mouse and he recognized her at last. Grandmother, Kuchish, Tanta Kwan, Te Di, Kuts Hit, I am Kuchish. His voice returned to him then and it sounded high pitched and it sounded as if maybe it hurt him to speak, but he learned how to speak and he never hesitated to tell the truth to anyone who would listen. He had another dream, and this is when he returned home. His voice came back, and he came home to Alaska, to his people, and he was happy to be here. He learned about the sea and the land and subsistence hunting and fishing, and he married a raven woman, and together they had six children, and each one had a clinket name. Another dream, and this one he saw Hawk. Hawk took him into this dream, and then suddenly he could see himself through the eyes of that hawk soaring over the world. He could see more clearly than he had ever seen anything in his life before. And he saw a mountain, and he knew that it was an important place. So when he awoke from the dream, he went to find that mountain, and it became a sacred place to him. It was where he took people, the ones who recognized him, the ones who needed him, the ones who wanted to know what he had known. 
He took them there to start them on their own healing journey. He took them there to ask them the question, who are you? Who are you? And he helped them to find the answer. When they are he, was young. When he had been a warrior. He became a peacemaker in the end. He never called himself a shaman or a medicine man, but he healed people. He never wanted to be a leader, but when he saw the many needs of his people, he gave everything of himself to them. He never called himself an artist, but he studied and he watched. And soon he could carve and he could paint in the traditions of his people beautiful objects. And when the drum sounded, each beat filled his heart. He danced. He danced like no other dancer. He lived the music and the song. You could see it when he danced. He is our friend. He is our brother. When he was with us, he taught us many things. With us, he gave life to Nautiklane, Guna Kadate, Raven, Hawk, and Crane. And when he spoke from this stage, you could hear him in the very back row. His voice might have been soft, and it might have been painful, but you could hear every word, because every word came from his heart. The night before we buried him, the northern lights danced across the sky above the tribal house where his body lay. And we knew then that we were seeing him up there dancing once again. And when we listened, it was as if we could hear his voice. I am Kuchish, Tan Tequan, Te Kwe Di, Kutsit. I am Kuchish of the Tungus tribe of the Brown Bear clan, of the Brown Bear house. I will always be part of you, my wife, my brothers and sisters, my people. I am Kuchish.
Hello. Yeah, you got no, oh, no. He got problem Horse. there. Horse. Guys, anybody? <laughs> Guys, anybody got some Viagra? He fallen down. Hello. Husband, my chance. It just like that. No, I good used for to nothing. Have a husband just like that. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah. They can't. He was always falling down. Gosh, we want to come out because we heard about the big doings down here. Big huh? party, huh? Big party. Hello. Oh, Jay. Like to see you. Grandma Susie. Uh -huh. She come all the long way. way. Wait, horse. You can't wait. That's long ways, huh? You can't. She come all. How many you can't here? Say, whoo! <laughs> Jay, that's there was good. like ten. Yeah, there's ten. That's good. <laughs> They come out. That's good. That's good. You come. I'll Everybody else is at Kmart, huh? <laughs> no, you know where everyone is there watching it on the TV. That's right. I saw it. Remember, we was watching it on the television. Uh -huh. We didn't even have to go anywhere. We just turned on the TV there, right yes. there. We saw a celebration. That was good. We was trying to get the cameras to come up to our house, but they said no. So we had to come down, huh? They it is to good to be here to see all these Indians. Oh, hey. look at all the natives. <laughs> oh, look at oh, yeah. I gotta all my people. My people that go inland, huh? Now we gotta come back and find our other people. I tell you, hurry up, get on the trail. You guys too late now, you camp out in Juno. That's okay, we got camp in Yukon, huh? We tried so, to get that gold, but no luck. Bad so luck. we was afraid to come back after that photo this morning. Oh Gee, gosh. that took how long, huh? How long does it take to take a picture? We was waiting and waiting and we was hot. There was nowhere to sit. They were just pushing us around, huh? I know. Gee. Besides that, that picture cost $40. I'm going to charge him $40. To take our picture. How long it We're going to tell them. For, and You'll then, tell them you know what I think it huh? was? He just wanted to control a bunch of Indians, oh, huh? Yes. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what I thought maybe anyway. He, maybe he thought he was Indian agent. Oh, yeah. He mixed up. He thought he's Indian agent. Yeah, that's Pretty it. Pretty soon he's going to start out handing blankets and check everything. Everything. No, he could take our picture for two hours. I know. I've never seen oh, anything like this. Susie, come all this way. You gonna tell a story, huh? Gee, you're bossy. I know. You know you how be. us coastal clinget women be. are. <laughs> Must hey, be that way up there in, yeah. in inland too? Yeah. Bossy. We're pretty bossy over there. Hey, Hazel. Yeah. Bossy. Oh. Well, up our country, we call our clan over there, you either crow or you're a wolf. Right? Mm. Here, what are you? We're raven or eagle. Uh -huh. I said crow. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to go up that way and find me a wolf. Uh -huh. oh, <laughs> me, I'm looking for eagle. She is looking for an eagle. Don't we're be getting... shy. I only had four husbands. I got lots of energy. I know. There was... I saw a couple hiders oh. earlier. Ooh. What about Robert Davidson? You already married? Gee, I heard a couple times, isn't it? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, Robert. Oh, well. He's cute, Anyways. though, huh? Oh, Jay. I don't know why we call our people up there crow. He's a crow, a raven. <coughs> He's all <coughs> the same. <coughs> <coughs> so, anyway. Almost the same. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to tell crow story, I guess. Yes, tell I was going to say story. raven, but I don't know. I'm going to mix up because I'm scared. The folks come to hear the story. Okay, I'm going to start the story. Up Clap Hurry day. up. All right. It's a long time ago. Crow was flying around. Coo, <coughs> coo. Oh, huh? yeah, two crow, gonna... maybe. Two, two crows was He's flying. flying around. He started to get hungry. What you know, a hungry crow. So... Pretty soon, he looked down there, way down there. What do you see? Bush. Oh boy. He fly closer. Up, up. He look. He look like blueberries. Oh boy. Everybody know crow like a blueberries. So he sat down. He started to eat. Nice, good Yukon berries. Oh good. 
He started to eat. He sat down for a while. Next thing he say, huh? I think I got job. I forget. Oh yes, I supposed to watch for boat. So he think I want to eat those blueberries. I supposed to watch for boat. What I gonna do? Hmm. So he walk over to the water. He look around. No boat. Huh? I know what they gonna do. So he take one eye. Just wait, I'm a little bit dry. <laughs> he take out one eye, put it on a lock. He take other eye, he put it on a lock. He talked to his eyes. He we said, We're gonna get you some water. Oh, good. Okay. He said, Crow, you tell me boat coming. Okay, Crow, they say. So he go back to blueberries. Mm, good blueberries, good, good. He just started to have a good time eating. Crow party. Next thing he hear, Crow, crow, boat coming, boat coming, hurry up. So I run over there. Just wait. <laughs> Thank you. Gonna see, see Alaska. <laughs> Gee, let me have some. Gosh, you're just talking the whole thing. I make it sound good, huh? Ah, that sounds good. <laughs> okay, so where was I? Yeah, you mix me up. Oh, they was having a party. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So he said, crow, crow, boat coming. So he rushed over there. He put on one end. He put on the other. Look around. <gasps> There's no boat. What's the matter, you? So he take out his eyes. You lied to me. That's bad luck. So he bounced him up and down to punish them. <laughs> you bad eyes. He put him back on the lock. He said, now you don't say nothing. Okay, crow. So I go back to blueberries, eating them all day. Good. Mm -hmm. Gee, that crow is greedy, eh? Eating. Pretty soon, he eating so much blueberries, his belly sticking out. He throw up. Blah. <laughs> Will it make room for more berries? He's not stupid. <laughs> well, why not? The Romans do it. Oh, he's eating some more. Crow, crow, boat coming. Shut up. Crow, crow, shut up, you lie. <laughs> crow. Yeah. Crow. Ooh. Ice. Ice. <laughs> uh oh. So he walked over there. Look over that log. <gasps> he found that log. No eyes. Oh, bad luck. What are you gonna do? So, he take one blueberry, one blueberry, and there's a boat floating away with his eyes. And they say that's how crow got blue eyes. That's a good story, Susie. Hey. Oh. They tell me, hurry up. Yeah, they, fast they're going to kick us story, off I'm now. Tired. They're going to kick us. But I want the young women, they want to sing a song. Oh, good. We're going to dance? You're going to dance? You're going to dance uh, right here shucks. for the people. You think i got to do all the work? I'm the guest around here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see you dance, too. <laughs> We're going to dance right here in front. I want to... Acknowledge the young women oh, yes. back here. Good they drum. You sound good. They sound good, these young women. Yes, yes. They sound real good. I told them, I said, you know, this is not traditional. This is not how we do it. We're supposed to use the hand drum. But you know, they sing because they're sober. They sing for their kids and their grandchildren. And they sing for all of us. And I said, well, if it come from your heart, then you just sin any way you want to sin. It don't matter to me. That's okay. Because it's, you know, sinning. You like, she likes to sin too, huh? Susie? Shucks you only with the colonel. Oh, ho, ho, ho. You want to see a picture of my boyfriend? <laughs> okay, we got That's my boyfriend. 
She brought that all the way down here. She put it right on her dashboard. I you? said, who is hey, that? Hey, don't bother oh, my boyfriend. Yeah, Gosh. You guys leave him alone, too. Okay. So we're going to stop. We're going to end with the song. And this song come from Jenny Klonacha. Give a speech oh. long time ago. It says, On da kukwa gut, e desh tu dati. I will enter the forest with my gratitude. She said that to Donna Walk to Austin Hammond. Then they made it into a song and they're gonna sing it. So we're gonna dance, eh? Okay. Where's those young boys? Oh, we're oh. gonna dance with them. Where are, are they? they eagle? Oh. <laughs> one of them is. Come here, baby. Just one. That's okay though, huh? I want the one with no shirt. <laughs> Okay. Oh, nice. oh, okay, you're gonna I found a new boyfriend. Are you eagle? That's the raven. the raven. Oh no, it's my brother. <laughs> How come they always do that? We fall in love with our brother. That's Shut it. it. Make okay. me mad. Go ahead, well, you sing a son. <laughs> <laughs> 